नमस्कार मैं हूं अमिताभ बच्चन बनेगा स्वस्थ इंडिया कार्यक्रम में एक बार फिर आप सबका बहुत बहुत स्वागत मैं इस कार्यक्रम का ये सातवां वर्ष है और आपका स्वागत करता हूं पिछले छह साल से आप इस सफर में मेरे साथ रहे हैं और मैं आप सब से प्रार्थना करता हूं कि अपने देश को स्वच्छ हरा भरा और स्वस्थ बनाए रखिए इन छह सालों में हमने बहुत सारी बातें की हैं बहुत सारे काम किए हैं अब ये बनेगा स्वस्थ इंडिया कार्यक्रम का सातवां वर्ष है और ये सबसे महत्वपूर्ण वर्ष भी है क्योंकि इस वर्ष हम एक ऐसी महामारी से घिरे हुए हैं जिससे बचने के लिए स्वयं स्वच्छ रहना और दूसरों से दूरी बरतना सबसे जरूरी हो गया है सारी दुनिया कोविड नाइन्टीन से आक्रांत है लेकिन हमने सतर्क और सुरक्षित रहते हुए उसका सामना किया है क्योंकि हमारे पास हमारे साथ थे हमारे वीर कोरोना योद्धा डॉक्टर्स नर्सेस स्वास्थ्य सेवाएं और बेहतर होता हुआ प्राकृतिक पर्यावरण हमारे सामने आज चुनौती यही है कि सभी को बेहतरीन स्वास्थ्य सुविधा कैसे मिले कोविड नाइन्टीन से हमें कई सबक सीखने होंगे कुछ हमने सीखे भी हैं जैसे हाथ धोते रहना दो गज की दूरी बनाए रखना लेकिन एक सबक और है हमें इस महामारी से अकेले नहीं लड़ना है अकेले लड़ भी नहीं सकते पूरे समाज को मिलकर सचेत और सचेत रहकर हमें काम करना होगा अपने चारों तरफ साफ सफाई के महत्व को समझना होगा समझना होगा कि स्वच्छ रहेंगे तो स्वस्थ रहेंगे स्वच्छता स्वास्थ्य और पर्यावरण का ध्यान जीवन का आज यही मंत्र है महान सच ये है बहुत बड़ा ना भूलेंगे कभी कह रही है ये जमीन और सारा समान I'd like to start with uh, Lakshman Narasimhan. Lakshman, the key point is that over the last six years, we've been talking about cleanliness that leads to uh, better health. Now, in the seventh year, it's that message is so important. It's crucial to survival now. Uh, do you feel that 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 whole message has come to a climax this year? At this point in time, without a vaccine. without a treatment that is fully effective the only thing you have uh, available to you is hygiene um hand hygiene mask wearing uh, ensuring you're a safe distance away okay. tech are um incredibly uh, in danger so this is the 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 need is large secondly the need is getting larger as we as humans collide with the environment even more we are see even more um the transference the possibilities of transference of viruses from the natural world into humans so the need is just getting and i think at that moment i think what we have to do is uh, truly drive uh information that makes people behave differently and i think programs like this over long periods of time help in still a set of behaviors and make things different so the need is incredible given at this moment and will be so for times to come gorav you and the company have had a crucial job during this pandemic as a company that makes sanitizers and soaps and a lot more uh it was crucial to keep your operations going during this time tell us what were the biggest challenges that you faced no i think i think i must start off first with uh, with thanking ndtv 
and and Mr. Bachchan. I, I think it's a privilege uh, for us as a company to be associated with NDTV and Mr. Bachchan for this cause. Uh, when when the lockdown happened, I, I don't think any one of us could have imagined uh, the degree of that lockdown and the degree to which it will impact people's lives. And, and, and the demand at that time, especially initially, of, of, of sanitizers and soaps and things like that was extremely, extremely high. So, so the first thing is, I mean, when the supply chain is broken, because the raw material suppliers, the packing material suppliers, your factories, all of it shut down on March 22nd. And, and till April 1st, I think we had no activity. And then we tried to get it back on track. Uh, I think the first thing that happens in those times is, is how do you take that cause forward? And, and to us, it was kind of a national cause uh, with customers and consumers calling us and, and telling us their stories of how they need sanitizers and soaps to protect themselves. So, so a lot of effort went in. I think a lot of teamwork went in. I think the help that we got from the government and the local authorities was amazing uh, to get that kind of help at that time. Uh, permits, food, I mean, how, when you get the workers to the factory, what will they do? You don't want them to, there's no food available outside. So you, we had to organize for, uh, you know, the, the halwais and to come in and, and cook for a thousand people uh, three times a day uh, to get the vegetables, to get all of it together, to do it in a safe, hygienic manner all of that, uh, to get our raw materials and packed materials people, the factory started. I can tell you today we are 90% there, uh, that we meet about 90% of the demand. In April, it was like 30% of the demand. And every day since then has been better than the previous That's day. very nice to hear. And it's, it's amazing. As we were telling you and listening to it, see, this disease is not going to get out of it. And we are going to have research for a long time. लोग इसके बारे में लिख रहे हैं कोई भी ऐसी दवाई नहीं बन पाई है जिससे कि हम कह सकें कि हाँ इसको खाने से या लेने से हम इस बीमारी से हमको मुक्ति मिलेगी कैसे रहे हम स्वच्छ और कैसे रहे हम स्वस्थ नमस्कार सर आज गांधी जयंती के दिन पे सबसे पहले तो मैं उन कोविड वॉरियर्स को याद करना चाहूँगा पाँच से ज़्यादा हैं जिन्होंने कोविड की लड़ाई में अपनी जान दे दी आपने सही कहा कि और ये प्रोग्राम आई थिंक हाईलाइट्स दैट फैक्ट दैट स्वच्छ एंड स्वस्थ आर एक्चुअली इंटरमिंगल्ड इफ यू आर हाइजीनिक यू विल आल्सो बी हेल्दी एंड आई थिंक जैसे हम कह रहे हैं कि वैक्सीन वी डोंट हैव बट व्हाट इफ वी डोंट हैव अ वैक्सीन वी हैव अ वैक्सीन विच इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड नॉन फार्मोकोलॉजिकल मेजर्स एंड दोज नॉन फार्मोकोलॉजिकल मेजर्स एक्चुअली आर थ्री बॉड पिलर्स यू टॉक टू थ्री पिलर्स ऑफ हेल्थ हाइजीन एंड एनवायरमेंट I would like to talk on of these three pillars, which are basically physical distancing, two gaj ki duri, regularly wearing a mask, jab aap bahar jaye, and hand washing. If we have these three pillars with us, we can win this battle against COVID-19. Prasun, when we spoke, uh, was it a, a month or two ago? And I said, would you help us with the whole concept and how would we go about it? You straight away in your mind simplified the whole concept. And now it's come out in this beautiful anthem and, in, and, uh, and this, you know, this feeling of optimism and that we will win this battle. Uh, you sort of had it in your mind as usual, Prasun. Give us a background to this, uh, the development of this concept. We are living in unprecedented times. Uh, that is known to everyone. But what does this mean? You know... Uh, I think swasthya, which was at the center of it, you say aap kehte self, it is self-care and swasthya. People do understand that, but in a very, you know, uh, very, very initial way, when, when, when you treat the disease and that's, that's, that's all about it, but taking care of oneself was not part of it. I think mental health issues, emotional health issues, which have emerged today, have made us realize the true meaning of swasthya. And when we realize the true meaning of health and swasthya, then you expand it beyond yourself and swachhita and environment also become part of it. So to the two of you, I mean, anyone can go first. How did you feel composing this anthem? You know, as you rightly uh, said, that music is such a powerful tool to communicate any sort of message. 
and uh, when we got this uh, opportunity we were truly humbled and uh, you know we knew it was a very very big responsibility that uh, uh, we had to put together a song and uh, you know i think somal and you you know we really put our uh, heart and soul in making this uh, song and uh, we just hope that we've been able to do justice to uh, prasun sir's words and we just hope that this song reaches to more and more people and uh, uh, we get the chance of making some contribution in this fight against covid lakshman you know in many ways this is a pivotal point in history right in the sense that uh, we've been talking about this for a long time but what's going to happen now will the change the way we live our environment uh, for years to come and we must be careful not to go backwards and learn from this learn from a crisis right absolutely pranoy i think what you're seeing is uh, you know i think dr colaria said it very well the level of receptivity to the message has gone up a lot we're seeing that in the way people behave you know we're in people's homes we're seeing how they operate uh we're seeing how they actually behave outside now obviously not everyone is doing that but at the core of this is we individually have to behave differently and we collectively have to behave differently and i think the level of sensitivity is going up a lot and i think you're going to see that this is truly a a um a tipping moment it's um it's a time where there is going to be a change when this recognition of the environment and uh how we respect it and how we coexist with it what we do with regard to hygiene along the three pillars that dr gulleria talked about around hand hygiene mask as well as distancing as well as how we think about nutrition and health and ensure that we have the right level of immunity that we take care of our bodies all that has to coexist and my hope is and my brother we were seeing it in the behavior that there is in fact a change gorov uh, i've watched you from day 1 of this crisis and i've realized um, you're a sardar at heart man of action proper sardar and you really but you must admit this is one of the biggest challenges you've ever faced but you managed to motivate all your uh, the people who work with you and uh, associated with you i think this to me uh, when it started was like a national duty i mean you can't believe dr roy the kind of letters and emails we got from consumers uh, customers is different obviously they were searching for stock but the emails that you get from consumers were a, a old grandmother staying alone in bombay and and she wants that all and when you give that to her through somebody you send a courier to her and and she then calls up my salesman and says thank you is amazing i mean that feeling of being able to do these things for society and for people at large and that is what i think motivates us and our people and i think that's what helped us to get over this and and i i must tell you that everybody in this company our company is extremely proud i uh, first met sparsha 2 years ago and on that occasion he fulfilled one of his many dreams to perform in front of an audience of a billion people born with a brittle bone disorder the now 17 year old sparsh who is a rapper singer songwriter motivational speaker would rather talk to you about his passion for music than the 140 plus fractures 140 plus fractures he has suffered in his life and so here he is ladies and gentlemen singing version of a jantu <laughs> वैष्णव जन तो तेने कहिए जे पीड़ पराए जाने रे वैष्णव जन तो तेने कहिए जे पीड़ पराए जाने रे पर दुखे उपकार करे तो ये मन अभिमान नाण रे वैष्णव जन तो तेने कहिए जे पीड़ पर आए जाण रे
चेहरे पर मास्क हो साफ हमारे हाथ हो दो गज दूर रहे मगर लक्ष्य में हम साथ हो स्वच्छ रहे स्वस्थ रहे स्वच्छता इकलौता मंत्र स्वस्थ रहेगा लोकतंत्र दूरी का भी लें सहारा जीवन है अनमोल हमारा स्वच्छ रहें स्वस्थ रहें as we all know unfortunately this year our campaign is playing out against this massive sort of central and big backdrop of the covid virus covid-19 um and what it is is it's a zoonotic so i'm going to do a quick primer on that but basically what we should understand is that the coronavirus represents as a disease but what it is is an environment problem so what is a zoonotic a zoonotic is either a virus a bacteria a prion or a fungi that sort of leaps from an animal to a human so a non-human animal to the human and that's what a zoonotic is and with the way our biodiversity is collapsing and with the way the environment is getting degraded um we are very much um in in danger of sort of you know having these pandemic cycles uh come around more often uh, and that could be a major problem so this is something that uh we need to really really because of this pandemic learn from this and see what we can do i would like to ask uh david quaman who's joined us my first obvious question you predicted this zoonotic in your book um 8 years ago Are you surprised that it's hit in such a big way and that it's a pandemic? 10 years ago when I was researching my book Spillover, uh I talked to a select group of disease scientists, um very smart men and women who spend time out in the field researching infectious diseases, zoonotic diseases, and at the end of that book I essentially compiled a consensual version of what they were telling me and what they were telling me was yes, there is a big pandemic that's bound to happen sometime relatively soon it'll be caused by a virus a new virus coming out of a wild animal what kind of a wild animal mm, possibly a non-human primate possibly a bat what kind of a virus mm, possibly a coronavirus or or an influenza virus those were the most dangerous where might that happen well some place where humans come in contact with wild animals in a forest that's being disrupted or perhaps a wet market where oh possibly in China. They told me this and I put this in my book and here we are. So, am I surprised at the scope of it? No. When I heard in early January, mid-January that this cluster of cases of abnormal pneumonia in China in Wuhan was caused by a novel coronavirus, immediately I thought, "Oh no, this could be it. This could be the big one if this is not an eye opener i really wonder what is and uh, you cannot talk about being healthy and staying hygienic by not talking about the environment it's it's all connected and related what we are today understanding with covid is that we cannot discount the environment the fact is during the lockdown we saw clean air but as you and i discussed on the program that's not the cost that we can pay for clean air we need to make sure that we have economic progress but we also have our right to breathe and the fact is with covid uh, 19 the comorbidity i mean if you have the virus which is ravaging our lands today i mean the infection rate is is massive on the other hand we know that it affects the lungs and lungs are what are most vulnerable when it comes to air pollution so we just cannot afford to discount the cost of bad air anymore balance dekhe ek santulan jo hona chahiye ye is tarah se ped lagaya paryavaran ka jo santulan hai aur ek economic development ka jo santulan hona chahiye wo mere khayal se aapke shehar se zyada aur kahi nahi zaruri hai how do we ensure this balance then ab bahut khushi hoti hai aapse mulakat hote aur amitabh bachchan ke sath mein hum panel par rehte hain to aur bhi zyada khushi rehti hai baat है कि हम पवई में डेवलपमेंट किया 200 एकड़ का खजान की जमीन थी और हमने पूरा उधर टाउनशिप डेवलप किया लेकिन वहां आप देखेंगे तो हमने 70 एकड़ की 
गार्डन और फॉरेस्ट बनाए उसमें 25 एकड़ में तो एक घना फॉरेस्ट हमने पार्क साइट हिल के ऊपर बनाया जो इनक्रोच जमीन थी और उसको क्लियर करके उसको फॉरेस्ट हम बना दिया तो ये एक बहुत बड़ी बात रही कि हम ये शहर में भी अर्बन फॉरेस्ट कर सकते हैं हमने ये 30 साल पहले किया है दूसरी बात हमने किया है कि हमने सीवरेज रिसाइकलिंग प्लांट लगाई चार मिलियन लीटर पर डे पवई में लगाई और थाना में लगाई उसके हिसाब से हमारी जो पानी की रिक्वायरमेंट है 30 परसेंट कम हो गई और हम गार्डन फॉरेस्टेशन में फ्लशिंग में हम ये उपयोग कर रहे ये 20 साल पहले हमने लगाए और आज हमने एक सुझाव दिया था वो शायद मुंबई कॉरपोरेशन अभी करेंगे वो पहले रिसाइकल करके नहीं कर रहे थे और वो पानी जो गंदी थी उसको प्राइमरी साइकिलिंग करके दरिया में छोड़ देते थे अभी उनका एक प्रोग्राम बन रहा है बन रहा है अभी तक बना नहीं है उनको रिसाइकलिंग करके उसको फिर ये पानी उपयोग कर सकते हैं जितने भी बड़े गार्डन हैं, इंडस्ट्रीज हैं, वहां हम उपयोग कर सकते हैं मुंबई शहर में पंकज जी वी हर्ड डेट ऑल इज डूइंग इट्स ओन बिट फॉर सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट कैन यू टेल अस लिटिल बिट अबाउट इट व्हाट गॉट अस स्टार्टेड एक्चुअली वाज सम डेटा दैट वाज वेरी वेरी ग्रिम राइट एंड आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट प्लास्टिक्स of all the plastic waste that is there in the world only about 10% gets recycled only 10% right the rest of it may into oceans it makes its way into landfills why because there is very poor segregation at the source and there is improper waste management right so tons and tons and tons of it goes into oceans and there is a study that was presented at the world economic forum that said that by 2050 there is going to be more plastics in the oceans than fish right and all of this was very very concerning for us and in the pandemic times the situation has taken a turn for the worse because people are using more biomedical waste almost to the tune of 40% some studies indicate and the plastics is a close second so we wanted to do something about it and not just at a global level but here in india okay and what better branch to do it than on detol we wanted to give the same germ protection that is provided by detol in a hand wash bottle that is 100% made from 100% recycled plastic right and 100% recycled plastic is a big deal because typically it's as a process it is very difficult to achieve people get to 20% 15% 30% etc but getting to 100% requires a lot of effort from a lot of different partners from resin suppliers to uh, you know the manufacturers to the product to the design stability wow. so this is made from 100% recycled plastic it's the first of its kind right and we've done this here and we wanted to bring the best of germ protection in a way that uh, you know people who are environmentally conscious can go ahead and use that option right and we wanted to bring it forward so yeah. many partners were involved into this banyan nation that provides the resin suppliers for us asocham we are working closely with them reliance it's it's a limited edition that we've launched in reliance stores right now and we're looking to see i'm very hopeful that this will do really well so that we can do more of it in the future chris uh, now yes, you know hi. talking of the hi uh, you know talking of this worst pandemic in in history i want to know from you uh how have you been responding to the new normal of this pandemic in your work in personal space yeah at uh, at rb we have had a uh, very busy time first and foremost our primary concern has been to make sure that our employees have been safe and well looked after during this uh, very challenging time uh and and that alone has been a, a significant piece of work but at the end of the day we exist here and our purpose really in this world is to provide access to high quality uh hygiene and health products and certainly detol uh being one of the most important products and we've experienced a very significant spike in demand which has caused us to really have to rethink our supply chain and increase our capacity uh many fold uh, across our various product lines we've also spent a lot of time providing access to science based information we know that consumers are very keen to understand and learn more both about the virus and as science evolves 
and our understanding evolves, as you just said, we still don't know all the answers, but we learn more every day. We also know that we have an obligation and we take that very seriously to provide science-based information to consumers. And so we have been actively engaged in that in partnership with uh, regulators, governments, and not nonprofit organizations. Um, and so those have really been the main focus areas for us. It's been a very busy time, but at the same time, we also understand that we play the absolutely critical role at the moment. And so it, it is safe to say that our employees have actually put forth heroic efforts to meet those challenges under very difficult circumstances. All of our employees are also affected by the pandemic in their personal lives. I just want to ask you one simple thing that uh, COVID has also taught us, that it hits your lungs and the atmosphere is crucial to make sure that you recover from COVID, a clean atmosphere. And what we are doing right now, at this moment, we are burning wheat crops, uh, rice, it's the rice crop now, is it, or the wheat? We're burning crops and that's polluting the atmosphere such a simple thing to stop, compensate the farmers so that they don't burn their crops. Absolutely, sir. Uh, I'm not an expert where policies are concerned, but I'm an aware individual and that's where my strength and my passion uh, for being an advocate for climate change comes from. You know, the idea is uh, to bring about a change on an individualistic level, to educate people about the knowledge that you have. I have seen some major changes in my ecosystem just by uh, following a more sustainable lifestyle. I have seen the people that work with me, that work for me do the same. So I feel it's a chain reaction and that's precisely why I started Climate Warrior. I feel um, uh, the biggest tool to fight climate change and to have a healthier environment is going to be education, is going to be literacy, you know, and, and uh, this is very important for our future generations to come because it is their world, you know, they have an equal right to live in a world that's prosperous, that's abundant, that's habitual. And I've grown up in a, a world like that and uh, it, it, it really scares me when I think of a fact that, oh, there will be a point where humanity won't have access to basic rights like clean air, clean water, basic nutrition and we, we already we are facing that. We are currently at the Samadhan Hub Park in Gurugram, a park that has been developed with a focus on waste management and waste recycling. I have with me members of the NGO I am Gurugram. I have with me Ms. Swanzal Kak Kapoor and Ms. Smita Ahuja to tell us more about this concept. First we'll go to Swanzal ma'am. Ma'am first tell us you helped design this park so if you could tell us you know how exactly these walls were developed, what were the waste materials that were used how did this designing process come about so Sukriti thanks for being here and I'd like to show you today that these are the kind of materials that we've used to develop the information walls and the idea of the information walls is to communicate uh, key facts to citizens about waste in a humorous and playful way so it's not doesn't become something which is like talking down to people but it becomes exciting and a fun thing for people to see. The message we want to give people is that if we are very conscious about how we use waste we have developed glass bottle benches and walls as well out of old glass bottles and typically if you see what one sees even globally you have a very ugly looking upcycling of waste materials. It's not always beautiful. So what we wanted to demonstrate here is that you can create great beauty and aesthetic quality from waste and have it so much more meaningful because whatever you have utilized is saving the landfill. This place is all about actionable solutions hmm. and we are telling people to hmm. take the choices hmm. that they feel comfortable, hmm. the steps that they feel comfortable hmm. in reducing their waste. So this hmm. area is a recycling station that we put together hmm. which uh, you recycle five types of plastic, paper, glass, hmm. e-waste, metal, so, uh, and you could reduce almost 30% of the thing, which is a resource which you're throwing as waste. And we have do-it-yourself kits uh, for uh, horticulture waste management here. The whole idea is waste is not waste till you waste it. So don't throw resource as a pollutant that is coming back to you and impacting your health. 
use your resource well. It's my pleasure to introduce the Minister for Road, Transport and Highways, Mr. Nitin Gadkari. Your work is very close to my heart because I've been in the past 15-20 years West to Wealth. I work a lot on this and that's why I have a lot of interest in this interest. What you were talking about as a minister, I can say that I am a minister of the transport. We have done a diversification of agriculture towards energy and power sector. I was talking about ethanol for 12 years. It has become a 20 crore economy. It will become a 1,000,000 crore in 3-4 years. तो इससे एक सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है कि ये जो परली की बात कर रहे थे इसमें पांच टन परली से एक टन बायो सी तैयार होता है और पुणे में संतोष गोंदेकर करके आईआईटी इंजीनियर का एक ग्रुप है उन्होंने ऑलरेडी राइस स्ट्रॉ विट स्ट्रॉ कॉटन स्ट्रॉ बगास एग्रोमास से बायो सी बनाया है तो बायो सी बनाते समय उससे मिथेन बनाते हैं मिथेन से सीओ अलग करके बायो सी बनाते हैं और मैं तो नागपुर शहर की हमारी साढ़े चार बसेस को कन्वर्ट करने का प्रोजेक्ट मैंने लिया है जो हमारा सीवेज वाटर है उससे मिथेन निकालकर मिथेन से सीवो टू अलग करके अभी 80 बसेस को कन्वर्ट किया है काफ़ी अड़चने आती है पर मैं जल्द वो प्रोजेक्ट पूरा करने वाला मेरा ड्रीम प्रोजेक्ट है तो मैं आपसे सबसे पहली बात प्रणव जी एक बात कहूंगा कि आप जिस उद्दिष्ट के लिए काम कर रहे हैं वो बहुत ही अच्छा है और मैं बीइंग ए मिनिस्टर मैं रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी के साथ बात कर रहा हूं कि एक दिन आएगा कि देश में इथेनॉल मिथेनॉल बायोडीजल बायो सीएनजी और इलेक्ट्रिक आएगी पेट्रोल डीजल कम हो जाएगा और हमारा पर्यावरण अच्छा होगा ऑल दीज सोल्यूशन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट नेचर सोल्व दम ऑलरेडी मल्टीपल टाइम्स ओवर एयर्स एंड इफ इंडिया इन द विजम ऑफ इंडिया we use nature based solutions instead of trying to use technology then for that we need a little humility right for instance everything that we've damaged is in the name of the economy but the economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment i mean the technosphere is a wholly owned subsidiary of the biosphere so if we think that we can consume the source and still keep producing it won't happen our gdp has fallen will fall and the solutions that i had articulated earlier these were after several discussions that bring the sponge back bring the bring the degraded forest back bring the wetlands back this needs a large number of people to be employed i would on a conservative level imagine that we would probably employ between 30 and 40 million people to bring natural india back through labor based human based solutions that will cause gdp to bubble upward rather than only wait for it to trickle down because people are being trickled on you know so yeah look yeah. these you know quick fix solutions don't work and prevention is better than cure and i work with children and i tell children the simplest of thing nature is self repairing we need icus when we fall yeah. sick we go into intensive care units all our sanctuaries national parks and all these other phenomenal gifts of nature are icus too they are intensive conservation units as david said we've got these diseases you know just sitting there the least we can do the least we can do is not tease the devil harish andre ji i have uh, a few questions You know, you won the Raman Magazine say for working towards getting solar energy to, the, you know, the poorest sections of society. Our future lies in renewables, doesn't it? I think what we have actually forgotten to uh, mm. know that India has <coughs> been always mostly a decentralized economy, and so decentralized energy sources like solar makes so much of sense. But today, what what has happened, uh, Amitabh ji, is that the the covid-19 as well as the climate change crisis both affect most is the poor uh, whether it's a poor in india poor in sri lanka or poor in tanzania it affects the poor whether it's drought floods and everything else and what i mean by solar is just not putting solar plants it's about decentralized utilization of solar energy to create democratize livelihoods democratize the delivery of health and democratize the delivery of education and and start making bubbles of 100 kilometers 200 kilometers and 300 kilometers where you start looking at production for that and consumption 
for that 100 kilometers. And that's the only way to actually look at efficiency and utilization of energy. And thus solar actually makes economical and social sense as well as leading to what Bhumi and the others were saying about consuming less. India has a huge potential should use COVID-19 as a R&D platform for the world. The solutions for Assam are very replicable for Tanzania and the Philippines. The solutions for Madhya Pradesh, where you interact solar energy and drought resilient solutions for the farmers in Ma in Ma and Madhya Pradesh are good for Ethiopia and central Brazil. I think that's what I think we are a, we are a, uh, what you call it, it's a macrochasm of world's problems, but we are also a macrochasm of world's solutions, and especially for the 600 million poor people. I think this is where the beauty of decentralized energy actually uh, stands. How, how do you look at this? You know, this uh, uh, masks and gloves, which are now becoming a major problem in waste disposal. See, we, we look for solutions, and those solutions also end up creating problems. So I want to know with you, what can we do? It's a global problem. In fact, uh, now the data is coming out that we've probably used by the end of this year about 129 uh, billion masks and 65 billion uh, gloves. And if you put them together, it will be the size of uh, Switzerland. So there is a really big uh, serious problem here. And there are very few things that we can do when we are in the peak of a pan pandemic because our systems are weak. You know, you can do many things if you have a strong system. So one of the things that we definitely have to know is that, uh, you know, right now we're focusing on COVID waste that is coming out of COVID patients. But there are people in the house. Many of them are positive. We've just discovered from the results that, you know, up to a third of us might have been exposed. So I think the point is the number one thing that is going to work in our country is you have to segregate your waste. You have to keep your dry waste separately for three days and then give it to whoever you're giving it. Medha ji, uh, can an environment ever be protected without social justice? <laughs> I don't think it can. <laughs> Because we talk about solutions, no doubt about it, and solutions are necessary, but why create problems? The problems are created not by those who live with nature. The natural resource-based communities show us the Gandhian path because they are simple living, they are more self-reliant than anyone else. And if we do injustice to them by snatching away their land, their forests, their rivers, their minerals also underneath the land, then what is the result? It is not only displacement, it is destruction of the natural ecosystems. And when we disturb the ecosystems, we have not just coronavirus. We have a number of viruses which our agriculture is faced on chilies, on soya bean. And we have faced five big cyclones within last three years. Oki, Amphan, Vayu, Nisarga, so on. So all of that impact needs to be taken into consideration and let the communities live their own ways, which are going to be the ways for the next generation and the next decade. The matter of manual scavenging has been an issue for many years. So during the last year when we spoke about this, uh, I asked whether there is some kind of a machinery where the human being doesn't have to go down into the sewer to clean it. And I was given uh, a, a manufacturing factory in, I think, Aurangabad. Mm. And I, I, I asked them if I could, you know, purchase some of them and give it to these scavengers. So I donated 50 such machines wow. and an entire bus I gave uh, as a contribution to the municipal corporation, which is used to, you know, clean up the sewers and stuff. Just a couple of months ago, we read, you know, about deaths happening of manual scavengers who'd gone down into the sewer and died. What can we do and what needs to be done to repair this? First of all, thank you so much. You have taken the personal initiation to show the way for the country. But only one, my submission is individuals can make a little change in the society. But through the policy intervention, we have to expect much more changes because it is not the problem of just one place or Aurangabad or Maharashtra or some other state. 
it is the problem of the whole pan india problem there are the another 49 districts in the country where women still going and carrying human excreta bare hands and taking to the dumping yards still continuing so we are celebrating bapuji's birthday after birthday and it has been the 150 and 151 it will go on but actually we are not putting an end to the inhuman practices why in the human society india like the great country can go along with the human scavenging and why we have to lose the life of the people